Hello and welcome to the Impact Lounge, the Adam and Roe Show. Roe is back with us this week after missing the last show as I bumped him for Sammy Callahan. How disgraceful of me. I turned heel, I know. But uh, if uh, you guys haven't heard the Sammy Callahan interview yet, uh, it is up on the channel now. Uh, some fascinating stuff in there, which uh, we're going to talk about a little bit when, when, when Roe joins me in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, something slightly different. And hopefully when we get interviews lined up in the future, we'll try and do a similar format. It was nice to hear Sammy talk out of character. Anyway, if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel and and uh, your first time listening to the Adam and Roe show. What Roe and I do is we tend to kick around things going on in the news, just talk general impact chit chat. So um, we also have a trivia question each and every week, and we, we do respond to your comments. Now, unfortunately, the last couple of weeks, it's uh, been a bit more hit and miss as to when the shows have been going up. Uh, as I'm sure you all appreciate, uh, we're all very busy and uh, sometimes it's not always easy to, to upload it uh, on the same day each week. So hopefully we'll get a bit of regularity back to the show very soon. But uh, because it has been a few weeks, we're not going to dive too much into the, the comments this week. But what I did want to do was certainly uh, read out who the winner of uh, the trivia question was last time. Well, or certainly the first person who answered it. And that was Matthew Truman. So well done to Matthew Truman, who the question being... Out of the Hardy family, who has the highest win percentage ratio in Impact TNA? And uh, he was quite right to point out it was Maxwell Hardy when he beat Rockstar Spud um, at the Hardy compound. So who would have thought that being beaten by a child would not be the lowest point of his career? Uh, well done, WWE, for actually making Rockstar Spud look even more ridiculous by pissing his pants on a recent episode of Raw. Uh, can the guy go any lower? I'd actually like to see him back. So I suppose better time than any to say, Ro, hello, and would you like to see Rockstar Spud back? I threw that one at you, didn't I? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me back. Um, I don't know, I'm uh, I'm just at the point when you're talking about bringing certain individuals back, I... I don't think he's needed. I mean, if he were to come back, I wouldn't have a problem. But just ask me and ah, he can stay with whatever he's doing right now. Fair enough. So anyway, that was a trivia question. And um, because we've taken a couple of weeks off, Ro and I have been talking about, you know, how we're going to go forward with the trivia question. Because, you know, we, we both have certain styles of questions that we like to ask, you know, who am I, what am I, these kind of things. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of uh, lounger interaction. So if I, any of you listeners right there have got a trivia question you would like us to ask on a future show, not only will you get a shout out, uh, but we'll ask your question as well. And uh, yeah, so what, how we want you to do it is if you have got a question, follow us on Twitter and then drop us a DM with the question and we'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, talk it out on a future show. So uh, just to remind you, our Twitter handles, I'm v 2 Adam IL for Impact Lounge. So that's me on Twitter. And Ro, your Twitter handle again? RT Great underscore. There you go. So, uh, as I said, first time stopping by, make sure you hit the subscribe button, please. Uh, you know, this we, we'd love to hear your comments. Um, it's great to see our follow followers go up each and every single week. And if you do see us talking on Twitter or on any of the social media, make sure you give us a follow and we're always very keen to interact with you, especially Ro. Ro is, uh, is much more active on social media than myself, but uh, yeah, uh, we do like to talk to our fans. Uh, so thank you for the, the kind comments about the show and hopefully you did enjoy the Sammy Callahan interview. Now, um, this week's show, there hasn't been that much news, uh, so it's quite hard to talk about things going on in Impact Wrestling. Uh, there was a couple of stories we'll pick up in a second, but uh, I wanted to pick out a couple of things uh, that happened in the Sammy Callahan interview. And if you haven't listened to it yet, please do go back and listen to it, because uh, it, it is excellent. And as I said, Sammy is out of character, which is a very unusual for him. But for me, the, the biggest thing that came out of it was uh, the fact that OVE and Sammy are signed for at least another 18 months. That, surely that's great news, Ro. Yes, it is. Very insightful. Thank you for that, Ro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just you... <laughs> saying, no, it, it is. I think the way, though, what, what my takeaway was, uh, you know, when he put the 18 months, you know, while hearing that, it's like, well, it's good. Then it just lets you know, you know, the way that they're booked these next 18 months is going to really tell a story potentially about their future with all three of them as far as it being an impact. So, we just have to see how things uh, manifest. Now, 
one of the other things that came out of the interview, and the reason I'm, I'm focusing on this is because this, this is a topic that Roe really wants to discuss uh, in a bit more depth this week, was um, we, we got into a, a whole discussion around the X Division. And uh, he was very much, you know, it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits, which was the original mantra of, of, of the X Division. Um, I, I pointed out that obviously it hasn't been booked that way up until the last few months. You know, for the last few years, it's certainly been a cruiserweight title. But, you know, it, it's good to see that, that they are doing something with it. However, um, the reason I bring up X Division is that obviously on the last few impacts, Brian Cage has come out and said he's going to go for option C. Now, this is the topic for this week. Option zero. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, <laughs> I've done a bit of ranting when it initially happened. I personally, I think for this particular scenario, before I actually get into my own opinion, I think this is a way for them to get the belt off of Brian Cage. I think for as dominant of a guy he is, they didn't know or have an idea of how to remove the title off of him. I mean, I think you could have done a multi-man match or any other different thing. And I mean, besides, we've seen him get pinned already. So I think having him eat a pin now, it's not going to be as big of a deal had it, um, than it was. But as far as option C, I feel like it was a concept that worked the first couple of times when you had Austin Aries. I think he was he did it uh, back to back. But then I think just overall what it does to the X Division title, it devalues it in a sense because it makes it. Instead of being proud to be exhibition champion, it really is a number one contendership or a potential number one contendership for the world title. So if that's what it becomes, you know, what incentive is it to become champion? You know, you're better off. I mean, you can just be number one contender if you have a number one contenderships match. So I just feel like it devalues the title a bit. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. And and I also think that you're absolutely spot on that this is the way that they're trying to get the belt off Brian Cage without him eating a pin. Now, the interesting thing about it was that when it was option C in the past, it was always at Destination X, wasn't it, that you had to cash it in? Uh, I don't I don't believe it was any other time. You couldn't just say, oh, I've got the X Division, I'm going to cash it in. Uh, but they seem to kind of throw that out the window, which does lead me to believe that you're absolutely right, that this is just a way. For, I don't know if they planned this, but I think they're just thinking, well, do you know what? We don't want Brian Cage losing to Sammy Callahan and handing the belt over to him that way. Um, we want him to, to to move on from the belt, but we don't know how to get it off him. So, yeah, you, you're quite right. It's, it's definitely a way just, just to, to get the belt off him. Now, so with regards to option C, my, my views on it is that I actually like it, but I do think that it should be a, a specific time that you can do it. And, and that way, it it almost becomes not like the old hardcore title, 24-7, it's defended. But you can imagine that if you know whoever holds the title at a certain point of the year gets the next title shot, like a number one contenders, you know, at a certain point, then that would make it excited that people are challenging week in, week out. And there's a bit of tension about, can I hold on to it until that date? Now, do I think they should do that with the division, uh, the X division belt? Most probably not. But I do like the concept of, of the fact that you can cash it in. Um, uh, it's just a shame that they just decided that you could use it at any point now. It's like a money in the bank almost, isn't it? Yeah, but like I said, I think for this time, and I think too, and I kind of compare it to with uh, the Feaster Fired, I think we see that, and I don't think we'll ever see Feaster Fired again. I think they use some of those when they need to um, accelerate something in storyline related. So maybe they wanted Brian Cage to be the one challenging Johnny Impact next, but the way to do it, they needed to get the X Division title off of him, but they didn't want him to lose, you know, upon uh, challenging Johnny Impact. So that was their way. And, you know, you think with the Feast or Fire when when we when news broke out that EC3 was going to be departing the company, that was their way of writing him off a of TV. So I don't think we'll see Option C back again. But, I mean, you, you never know. But I just, you know what, I just think like this. You know, what happened to a good old-fashioned number one contenders match? Like, why is it that, you know, having to cash in a title? And I know before it was doing it at Destination X, which I guess I'm okay with since you're do it's at a certain event. But, you know, and, I, and I'm just speaking this, and, you know, uh, Impact fans or fans listening to this podcast join in. Like, you know, do you guys miss having good old fashioned number one contendership matches? Like, I feel like we just get get random title shots now. We don't get nothing building up to this uh, said title match. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you look at Johnny Impact. I mean, he's faced 
Killer Cross he's faced. Uh, you can understand that because there was a bit of a storyline there, but that's just disappeared. Um, you had Phoenix challenge for it just randomly. So it does seem real. Anyone can challenge if they want to. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any kind of narrative to it. Uh, at least this is narrative. But I, I'm with you, Ro. I, I think that I, I love the Bound for Gory series. You know, I always thought that was a great, you know, program to give people reasons to have matches as opposed to two guys backstage having a drink and saying, hey, you're my best mate. Let's have a fight next week. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, the, 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 the art of the storytelling ha- has been quite poor when it comes to titles. It's been good in other areas, yeah, but, but usually the title payoffs and, you know, matches, as you say, they're just thrown out there for, for just randomly, just absolutely randomly. So question for you, Ro. Um, first of all, you know, we don't, we're not encumbered now by having to do the review of the show and those kind of things. So we can get into a bit of a fantasy booking of what we think is going to happen here. Do you think that Brian Cage is going to take the title off Johnny Impact at homecoming? No, I don't. <laughs> Would you like to expand on that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, um, no, I think what they're going to do if I'm fantasy booking, we're going to end up getting, not at homecoming, but there's going to be an angle set up where we're going to get a triple threat match between Johnny Impact, Brian Cage, and Killer Cross. And then after that, I think, and maybe this is just more of me hoping, I think the person that takes the belt off of Johnny Impact is going to be Eli Drake. When that happens, that remains to be seen. I would assume it would be on a pay-per-view or some big headline show. But, yeah, I got Johnny Impact retaining at homecoming. Yeah, I, I think that we could see a heel turn by Johnny Impact, siding with Killer Cross and uh, screwing Cage out of the title, which could lead to a Cross-Cage um, feud. And as you say, Eli Drake as, as the baby face coming in and taking off a heel Johnny. So I, I, think he, I think you most probably are right that there is going to be some shenanigans in the match. But I, I do think that we're going to see a Johnny Impact heel turn possibly uh, on this one. Um, OK, so the flip side of that, the X Division belt is uh, vacated and it's obviously going to go to a Ultimate X match, which I'm glad they're bringing back because we haven't seen a good one of these in quite some time. Who do you think is uh, going to take the, the title at homecoming? You know, I, I mean, we don't know the participants yet. I know this upcoming uh, Impact, we're having a qualifier. Um, it's Willie Mack. I for, forgot who he's facing. I want to say it's Jake Chris. But if I could have my ideal person to win the title, because I think the, the positive with this Ultimate X match, the X Division needs a reset. You know, it needs an identity. Because, you know, we fans think, some fans think one way, some fans think other. Like, you know, I've always been of the mindset it's a cruiserweight title because you look at a lot of the people who compete in the division and who've won it major, you know, majority. I know we've had some outliers, but I would have Desmond Xavier. I think this is a guy, It's he's long overdue. I know now he has his group, the Rascals, but he would be the guy that I would put the belt on assuming he's in the match. And then if not him... I really want to see Jake Chris as champion. I really think there's so much they could do with that. But those would be my two my two candidates. Okay, cool. Um, I've had no thoughts on it. And, and it does seem like uh, Sammy Callahan's time's gone uh, with the X Division. I don't know if, you know if he's in the title match, uh, if he's got one of the qualifiers. I think some of the, the Chris brothers, I think certainly are. One of them is going to be in there. I don't know if both of them are. But um, I think it's about time that, that LVE with Sammy, one of them gets a title run again because it's been a long time since any of them have held any gold. Uh, I think it's been close to a year, possibly. Yeah. I can't think. You, you think I don't think they've held anything, have they? Yeah, just the tag, the tag titles. That's why, too, you know, it just makes you wonder, like, if they knew they were on a Brian Cage to challenge Johnny Impact, why not just have him drop the title to Sammy Callahan? I mean, I think, you know, we look at Sammy Callahan and, you know, maybe he doesn't scream X Division, but I think he's small enough in stature where it can get, you know, could be passable. And the one thing I was talking to Keith from Clock Cleaners, I said, it seems now the thing that screams X Division is when you see guys who don't have the X Division look, you see them go do the first thing they do in a match is a Rana. So I guess that means that makes it that qualifies as X Division style. So, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I just don't get why they didn't drop it to him because I think Sammy 
you know, someone out of that group needed to hold the title. And I think Sammy would have been the perfect candidate. But, you know, yeah, I I, I wouldn't mind um, them giving Jake Chris a run with the X Division title. But we first got to see all the participants before we can actually pick our, you know, have our uh, picks. Absolutely. OK, so we talked about OVE there. I, I mentioned earlier on that they've signed for another 18 months. Obviously, they're heavily involved in the tag division. Their best feud, I personally believe, was was against LAX. Um, I, I, having said that, I can't think of another OVE feud, really. Um, maybe the Lucha Brothers. But um, LAX have been in the news quite a lot this week uh, because Impact has decided to pull them from uh, is it Evolve events, I think, from memory, and pull all of its talent, I believe, from Evolve events. So I just really want to, to ask you your thoughts on, first of all, this piece of news of that they're not going to be working with Evolve anymore. And secondly, we'll, we'll move on to LAX and what the future holds for them in a second. But but what, what do you make of this? You know, for me, because I don't really know too much of the promotion. I had joked on Twitter. I said the only thing I know about Evolve is the um, Pokemon when I was at age 10 trying to turn one of the characters into the final stage. But on a serious tip, here's my thing. Could Impact have handled, and I don't know all the details, could Impact have handled it better? Of course, okay. And we're gonna. I'm not gonna absorb impact, but I feel the person. I don't know the guy's name on top of my head. He ran the Twitter takes to air what happened. I feel like there was an intent to pretty much shame impact. Like he was, you know, obviously, you know, letting people know, you know, the fans who were looking forward to it. Like this isn't gonna be happening. But you know, you could have said that and then left it alone. But I felt like there was intent to go to Twitter and pretty much shame impact so everyone can, you know, trash impact. And I think the biggest thing was, I think the reason why impact pulled out is because they didn't want LAX to lose to one of the teams. Cause I guess one of the teams is in a, a developmental team and, you know, LAX is their champion. So obviously you don't want them losing. Now does impact have that right? Um, trying to control how their, their talents book, of course. I mean, but I think it's hard sometimes when you're having your talent booked on shows to kind of, you know, try to want that creative control. But with that said, I just think, yeah, while they might have handled it poorly, that person run into Twitter to do all that. Like, you know, I just kind of feel like he wanted that attention and just try to, you know, turn impact, turn people on to impact. Because I've seen uh, one of the guys who does PW Insider. He was just like, this is poor on impact. Like, let it go, man. <laughs> I mean. You know, so that, that was just my thing. I just think while Impact handled it poorly, I think Evolve, you know, they it was a punk ass move for them to run and bitch on Twitter. Yeah. So so just to fill in a few of the gaps, yeah, the, the Evolve guy was uh, Gabe Sapolsky. I think I say, say his name. He's the guy who runs Evolve, who, who's the one that ran to Twitter. But yeah, as you quite rightly said, they were going to be facing a, a team called the Street Profits. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming they would have been booked to lose. Now, the, the reason why impact were keen not to have that match go ahead is uh, the street profits are in nxt and uh, obviously you know it, it it starts to get them it, they might appear as impact champions on the wwe network um losing to nxt developmental talent and i can understand why impact as you say would would not really think that this is too clever of an idea so i think it's sad with the whole evolve relationship which let's face it there's plenty of promotions out there that they can work with. They don't need to work with everyone. But I think the dangerous thing is that Evolve is is becoming like a feeder for not even WWE, but for NXT. So it's like, uh, you know, a feeder of the feeder for WWE. And I think it is very dangerous if you start airing your top talent. And let's face it, LAX are the top, ta uh, you know, they're up there as, as, you know, in the top five of, of, you know, people that people would want to see in WWE. You know, if you're going cherry picking an impact i think they would be maybe even number one or two um so i can understand why the the the, the part of it that that i don't like is the is the fact that i just hope this doesn't turn lax's head and get them thinking well maybe we should be going to wwe and, and leave impact behind because i, I think they've been served Brilliantly, they, they've been given storyline after storyline after storyline whilst an impact. I can't think of any time when they have meandered. You know, OVE, I've had nothing to do at times. You know, other teams have had nothing to do. LAX have always had a story since they've been in uh, impact. Would you agree or? 
Yeah, but I would I would say this, and now we see enough now with a lot of these talents, and and LAX is hit reaching that point where maybe they feel that they've done everything they could in Impact, and maybe they want to you know take it to the grandest stage. So you can't there there can't be that fear. I would say if anything, what they need to start doing is in case you know they kind of get a hint of maybe that's where it's headed. They need to have some teams ready to you know, take over, take over the mantle should they depart. And I think that's one thing that impacts sometimes, you know, where, where they uh, look past where then when they lose a team, they have nobody to fill that void. So I would just say is if you get that feeling and I mean, they know, you know, the LA has been, been there now they're going on three years and they've accomplished a lot. Now, are they going to decide to split them up and make them single stars? I mean, it remains to be seen. But, I mean, if you kind of get that idea that maybe that's a possibility, then you need to have some team kind of waiting in the wings. So if, if they were to depart, then you got, you know, you're not left kind of just empty-handed. You got someone else ready to take the mantle. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. And, you know, Impact, ha- well, they, they've just got the, the Rascals come in. They They've... I suppose you could argue they just had the hev- heavenly bodies recently, but they got Falabar, KM. You know, there's a couple of others that 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 could be you know put into that tag team. No one as of the stature of LAX, but I've always said you know huge fans and you know Ortiz has gone up in my estimation in the last six months. I think he's actually got better and gone past Santana, who I was always said was the next world champion. Um, so I, I hope they stick around because I, I just feel that WWE. I, this is the thing that, that upsets me, and this is an let's face it, this is an impact podcast. Yeah, that we're doing, we, we're fans of impact wrestling first and foremost. But but WWE became shit when WCW folded, and when and also when TNA started to go down in the ratings, it just meant WWE could go and do whatever they want. And it just feels like WWE have never learnt that if you buy up all the territories, all the other promotions out there, and get them all signed up, you're left with no competition, no one to push you. Now, they may not care, but the, as fans, we should all care. We should all care. You know, they've just done something this week with, with UK talent, UK NXT. They said that uh, that's it now. You can't work indie dates, you know, if you're working on UK NXT. That's pretty much killed the UK indie scene because you've got all these guys signed up to them. So it, it seems WWE are intent on signing up everyone just to kill other promotions. And, and you know, it's like, uh, you know, Cody and... Jericho talk about that you, you've got to band together and it's what Don Callis is, is, and Scott have been trying to do is band together as an alternative because you can't take them on one on one you've got to have backup and and I just hope that LAX don't jump because they are superstars these guys I, I think I know we, we had this discussion on Twitter I think they're the best tag team in the world you, you went for OVE uh, a few other people said Young Bucks etc on the conversation but LAX are, are, are just incredible and, and I would hate hate to see them go over to WWE. I know financially they always probably make more money, but I'd hate it. Well, and see, that's the thing. You know, you look at it, like, I agree. WCW was the biggest threat. And if WCW didn't get in their own way, and that's what I think with a lot of these companies, when I think about ranging from, I'll say, 2000 to 2010, you could argue every promotion, you know, TNA at the time, Ring of Honor, you know, one that I haven't mentioned, they had a moment where, there was that possibility they could have actually been a number two because you're not going to overtake WWE only because they got the history on their side. But, you know, I think a lot of times what happens, and even too, I've uh, kind of had this idea with uh, impact. I think sometimes you get these people who are in creative and I think they're kind of marks for themselves in a sense. So, and they don't have that kind of the business acumen where you got to give McMahon credit. That's what McMahon has. And that's why he's been able to thrive. Like, Right now, for them, my my whole perception of them is they're in the business of making money, okay? They can put on a crappy show. Yeah, fans can complain. But as long as some dollars are raking in, they're good, you know? And, and people, you know, contrary to people, what people say on online and stuff, you go to those shows, they're not like, and I hate to, you know, take a jab at Impact since we cover Impact, but you look at, you know, the Impact tapings where they have a lot of the stuff, you know, taped, uh, tarped off sometimes. Those e shows, even the, where you might see certain sections, for the most part, they're you know f- close to filling arenas for the most for the most part. So it's not hurting their their pockets. And as long as they got with Fox and all these other uh, sponsors, they're gonna be fine. So there's no incentive 
to put quality programming where these other companies they need to you know they don't have the the uh the pockets to just throw anything out there so at the end of the day i just think you know the option to go to the e now is not to elevate your career i mean maybe they have it on your resume but it's all for financial purposes that's why you see a lot of these people now where you know where they came from you know they were seen in a, a higher light they go over there they're misused but hey you know they're getting paid well then you know they got families i get it so it's just kind of one of the things that's why even if lax is entertaining the idea would it surprise me no but just have somebody waiting so we're not left hanging yeah absolutely right well before we finish up then because uh, we are running out of time um whatever news story caught my eye i uh, just want to touch on it I, I don't know how true it is I, I can't even find the source now but i read that apparently the talks with pop tv have completely broken down and it looks like uh, after the new year that that extension that was being talked about looks like that might be gone so it looks like impact is scrambling around for a new tv uh company partner um but we knew they've been looking anyway but um yeah this seems that uh, that is all going ahead now so so i don't think it's a bad thing because viewership has gone down since they've moved to the new time stop and pop tv have given up on them i, I just don't get this uh, because they, they paid for the product already surely it'd be better to put it in the time stop where they were getting better viewers but who knows as opposed to reruns so um so that's it for this week unless you've got any final thoughts there ro yeah, let me add on to the Pop TV ordeal because, I mean, it's been rumored, I guess, that Impact's been talking with True TV, WGN, and Sci-Fi. And I know a lot of people are, you know, having their choice of oh, which channel they should get on, what would be the best. And I think that's all cool. And even, too, that Pop TV, for the time being, is going to air Impact until they find a, cha you know, a channel, which, you know, you got to say that's cool on the Pop's, you know, part because they could easily be like, the hell with you guys. You know, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I would like, just because I don't want to get my hopes up or have, you know, see people get their hopes up that they land onto those, one of those three big channels, because obviously that'd be a big win. But I really think they should try to see if they can reach a compromise with Pop. Only because if they can't find any, any uh, station to get on, you know, you wonder how long is Pop going to keep them you know, on while they're trying to search to, you know, to go to another network, you know, they've already kind of thrown them in, you know, the doom slot of, you know, being on later and whatnot. So I think if you can try to repair that relationship and maybe get a second show out of it, because I don't know about anyone else, but I didn't know about pop till they went to impact. And then later on, I figured out, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, wives watch it to watch, uh, watch the uh, soap operas and whatnot. So you could argue impact kind of put them on the map a little bit. So maybe repair that, uh, you know, just in case one of these three things fall, fall through. But that's just my thing. Right. That's our show for this week, folks. Give us your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, and we'll obviously uh, read out your comments on the next one. Also, if you have a trivia question for us, uh, we'll be delighted to read it out. Just make sure you follow us on Twitter. So the Twitter handle again is um, V2. As in the letter, the number, and then Adam IL for Impact Lounge. So V2 Adam IL. Uh, check me out on Twitter and drop us a DM with a trivia question. Make sure you give us the answer as well, of course, uh, because, I, you know, uh, I, I never get the right when row sets them. So you better give me the answer is what I'm saying. All right. Um, make sure you hit subscribe, share us on Twitter and all social media, and we'll catch you next time.